Hello and welcome to this new post where I want to show you the integration of Copilot Studio with ServiceNow. And then in a second step I want to extend this integration and show you how we can make or use speech to text and text to speech uh, for this integration scenario. So let's get started. So why did I came up with this service now? Well, Basically, a colleague asked, hey, can I have a bot or a co-pilot that I can use in combination with ServiceNow um, to inquire incidents, update and create records and incidents and provide details about ServiceNow knowledge articles and so on. Yeah. So I thought, hey, okay, um, should not be too difficult yeah? um, because there is a ServiceNow developer environment and there is also an API framework that I can use to integrate with Copilot Studio. And because I did not know ServiceNow before in detail, special thanks to my colleague, Natasha, who helped me um, yeah, getting a ServiceNow developer environment that I can use for this demo. Okay, but now after this short intro, let's have a look at how this works in reality. So I'm here in my Copilot Studio where I created my Copilot. And uh, before we dig into details how I set up things, let's have a look at how um, this thing work. Yeah? So first I have a simple question. I want to list all open and unassigned incidents from um, ServiceNow. And let's turn on this toggle that you can see uh, what actions and plugins are used. And in a minute or so, we should see a list of uh, different incident numbers and the priority. That's what I wanted as an output. Of course, you can include more information, but I said, okay, incident number and priority is sufficient for me. Yeah? Then let's have a look at maybe this incident number yeah? and say, I want to have details. So list me details of incident number um, 7001. Okay, and now you see on the right hand side, it inquires the status of a ServiceNow incident order. It says, okay, there's a short description. Yeah? Uh, employee payroll application server is down and so on. Yeah? So if you, if you have this information, maybe you want to uh, do an update. Maybe you want to make a change. Yeah? And of course, you can go to ServiceNow and do that. Um, or you can use Copilot Studio doing that for you. Yeah? And I made a configuration in a way that I cannot destroy many things. So I said, okay, um, I just want to update the description. Yeah? Um, because if you update the uh, state priority and something else, I might make a mistake. I might make a mistake. Yeah? So let's say um, I want to make an update with the text, uh, new text or something, new text, English. Yeah. Now let's see what happens. Um, you see now on the right hand side, we get a new plugin and it asks me, hey, do you really want to make this update? Yeah. Um, I say yes. That's a kind of security feature that we have available with our plugins. And then um, let's wait until this info is done. So it says update completed. Yeah. Um, so now let's have a look at incident 7001 and move to my ServiceNow system. Let's refresh the incidents and 7001 is this one here. You see, this is the new um, text that we updated directly from Copilot. Uh, of course, you can do uh, many other things. You can ask, uh, you can use and integrate generative actions and so on. Um, just to, to, to work with all of these things. Yeah? So it's pretty easy um, to configure that. But now let's have a quick look at how I set this up and how I configured this. Yeah? So the first thing is I have here different topics. Yeah? Um, they are basically out of the box topics and I added here the actions. Yeah? And you see here, these are all um, Power Automate flows. Yeah. So for example, let's say if I want to create a new incident, I did not show this just for a reason of timing here. Um, then you will see that you have to describe when this 
um, action or plugin is used uh, for to create a new service incident, then we can um, provide a short description and the urgency. That's what I wanted to fill. And then we get a feedback, okay, it's done. Uh, but all of these things are here integrated with flows. Uh, and let me quickly show you um, two flows. The first one is uh, this one here. Yeah, where we inquire an individual incident. Yeah? I just give the incident number and then I'm using here this HTTP connector yeah? um, where I shared you the reference yeah? in my slides. So it's pretty easy. Um, and then I return here a value. Yeah? Um, the other thing that I did not show you uh, yet yeah, makes use of the standard service now connector yeah? where you can get knowledge articles. So you can also ask about articles um, in ServiceNow and get a feedback. Yeah? Um, this makes use of this connector, works the same way. You just ask here a question yeah? and then it uses one of the plugins or one of the topics and gives you a feedback. So pretty easy, pretty much standard and what you are familiar with. Okay, so that's the first part of the demo that I want to share with you. Um, and now let's go back to my PowerPoint uh, for introducing you with a second team. Okay, so after this first demo, uh, let's have a look at things. Yeah, actually what I showed you is something that you can find in one of the previous posts that I made. Uh, you can also find this on uh, Microsoft Learn. And the only difference is that we have a different database behind the service now one instead of SharePoint, Excel or whatever you have. Yeah. But the concept is pretty similar. So I thought, Hey, hmm, yeah, let's do something different. And what I want to show you next is how we can integrate the whole thing in a power app with speech to text and text to speech. So what I want to do is I want to uh, speak something, have a question, um, get it translated into text fire it to um, Copilot Studio and then get a feedback from Copilot Studio. And how this is going to work, that will be part of the next demo. So let's check it out. So I'm here in my Power App where I integrated four different uh, features into the Microsoft logo. So we start on the top with uh, voice uh, control then I have a text field that should give us the, the text that was uh, spoken. Then I want to get the result um, from Copilot here and then I want to read it aloud. Yeah? So let's have a look at how this works. Please provide me details for incident number INC 000 7001. Now, after speaking this, Let's uh, get the output. So here you see, that's what I have spoken. And now the next thing is I ask Copilot. Yeah? I click here a button that triggers a flow, but actually I could have done this uh, with the standard actions. Yeah? So if, uh, if uh, the, the, the recording ends, I could translate this. And then if this is filled, I could directly trigger the other one. But I wanted to show you what is the outcome. Yeah? And here you can see the feedback from the copilot is this. And you can see the description. This is our new text in English, the one that we just entered. Yeah? And here's the urgency and so on. And now also here, I have here a manual button to show you the process and how it works. So now behind is a, is a speech to text element. And if I click that, Number Inc. 0007001 is as follows. Short description, new text English. Description, employ. Okay, I stop here. I um, do not want to uh, read the whole part because it takes half a minute. But I hope you got the idea how um, this works. Yeah? So now let's have a look at how I configured this. Yeah? So the first part, speech to text, that's easy because there is a colleague, Risa. If you don't know him, he posted something about it. Yeah? And I used a similar similar technique. Yeah? So if you don't know how this works, have a look at his uh, YouTube video. Then a second thing is, how do we come from this text 
to this answer uh, that we get back from Copilot. Yeah? So the answer to this is um, there is a flow. Let me show you the flow. It's this one. It's one from my previous runs. And what I insert is basically just the text. Let's go maybe here, then you can see it better in the edit mode. Um, because what I hand over is yeah, basically the, the text or the question that I have. And that's my starting point. Yeah? Then I get a token, start a conversation, send an activity, and then I receive the activity. So these are these four steps that you need. Yeah? And how that works is described here. You have an IPI difference for a direct line. Yeah? You have authentication, start a conversation, send an activity, receive it. Yeah? And these are the different steps that I have. So you can really follow this um, guideline. Um, there's only one, one small trick for getting the token yeah? to, to uh, trigger this one. You need here the URI of your copilot. Yeah? So where can you find it? Well, um, you just go here yeah? in the channel section, mobile app, and then you have this here. Yeah? And that's, that's the one that you need um, to, um, to get the token. Once you have the token, you can then start the conversation um, and then basically send an activity. And sending an activity, that's important because what I'm doing here is I'm sending a message. Yeah? But, well, how does the copilot handle that? Well, there is a trick because if you are in the copilot, there is a topic um, that I created and this one just says, um, where is it? Um, message, message received. Yeah? So my trigger um, is basically here, um, this one, where you can say, hey, message received, event received. I say message received, yeah? then I get this and then I go into the dynamic chaining and um, get all of the details. Yeah? So that's the activity that you send and then I have a delay. Why is that? Well, because the flow, I noticed the flow is so fast if you just um, jump from send activity to receive activity, you might not have uh, received the answer back or only part of the answer. Yeah? So I said, okay, make a delay. I think I put 10 seconds yeah? um, where I wait. I think you can try with five seconds to see. Yeah? And then you get here a, a HTTP body back. Yeah? And that's actually a very ugly string. Yeah? Let me show you that from, from the last run. So if you look into that, this string looks really like, wow, I cannot identify anything from that. Um, and for yeah, getting this into our Power App, I used a small trick. So let's have a first look at the HTTP output. Yeah? So here is the raw output, which is really long and ugly. Yeah? So I cannot read details from that. So what did I say? Hey, um, we have um, the AI prompts. Yeah? So what did I do here? I created this AI prompt and let me show you that. Um, it's this one where I paste in the body uh, of the HTTP connector and then say, hey, format this nicely and read out the text for me. Uh, um, and then I get this, feedboard, uh, this feedback in, in a nicely formatted way. Maybe you can make it better even uh, and return it to my Power App, um, which gives me then um, this, this element. Uh, and the last thing, from text to speech, I just use the Microsoft Translate um, connector um, and then I can have this uh, read aloud. Okay, so that's it what I want to share with you. Yeah, uh, kind of different way how you can interact with your co-pilot. So if you want, just give it a try. And if you have questions, let me know. In a second, I will share you my contact details. Okay, so here at the end, a uh, short summary of the previous uh, demo that we did, where we integrated speech to text, Copilot Studio, text to speech, uh, in a Power App uh, to get a feedback from our Copilot. And as usual, um, if you have questions, send me an email or post me a comment on my blog. Then at the end, thanks for watching and listening. And then till next time.